cock do 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 y'all how's it going anyways uh it's another day it's saturday now uh, we're getting ready for the storm that's about to hit um i decided today to pull out one of my special guitars to mess around with this is i'm gonna introduce you to all to ripley ripley is my um custom steve i universe silver dot series they only made them for one year um 1989 great guitar um it was custom because it was airbrushed uh there was only if i remember right there was only five that were done up this way uh it's i love this guitar this guitar is awesome it screams me and that's why i i, I worked so hard to get it. i traded like two uh two gibsons to get this but um, anyhow, no further ado, this video is gonna be me pulling it out, showing up for a little bit, and then um, I'll do another video with music and stuff, all right? So uh, we'll see how we're gonna do this because I kinda wanted to do, actually that's my daughter screaming. I gotta stop the video here so I can switch it around because there's no way of, okay, here we go, continuance. So this case, Team J Craft 5 in his case. We're gonna pull her out. There she is in all her glory. This is Ripley. Look at this beautiful girl. Yes, sir. And we get her stuff we need help. Strap and bar. here for right now and we will lift Ripley out of the case so we put the case away and then we'll get on with the rest of it oh. what is going on here something's not we're not right hold on She is a player, so she does have some dings and chips, but as you can see, see, this is all custom finish. Does have an artist signature right there. I've tried to look up the artist, the only thing I can tell is that he does, he did tattoos. That's all in the paint, isn't that nice? Ripley, made in Japan. Yeah, I have it tuned. A, D, G, C, F, A, D. That's the tuning I use on this one. All right. Okay, so I'm back. And apparently, I was slightly wrong on the year. Ripley came out in 1997, the Silver Dot. It was a one year only guitar, Universe 1997. So that's my bad. But with that said, let's get the, um, the cord in place.
the run through on Ripley. I gotta shorten my cord. These Ernie Ball cords are not living up to what they're supposed to be. This is the second one that's been shorting on me. It sounds like there's a grounding issue because I know there's not. And the amp has. I don't know what the hell's going on in the trailer. Yeah, that's, that's weird. So here goes a little story. Some people think that I got into the universe guitar because of Steve Vai. Well, I mean, Steve Vai is one of those legendary guitarists that, yeah, you look up to and you you grew up watching his his style and stuff. But that that's not why I got into the Seven Streets. The gems, yeah, his gems, those influenced me, and I, and I had a few gems because of that. But the universe wasn't because of Steve Vai. Um, Back when I graduated high school, after I left Job Corps, I had moved to Santa Maria to live with my uncle and aunt for a minute. 
and um, formed a band out there. And my band used to play the same clubs as Corn, but at the time Corn was not Corn, they were going by LA Police. Um, and I had made friends with Monkey and Head and Fieldy. And um, I mean, some of the shows, they used to use my drummer because David Silva was too young to play in some of the clubs. This is a true story. And um, these guys were buying the used universes from pawn shops. And I started checking those guitars out and I fell in love with the tone and the stuff that you can do with those guitars. And that's why I got into the universe guitar. And uh, currently, I, at one time I used to own four of them, but currently I own this one. And Ripley is my favorite out of all the ones I had. I, I do kind of want to get one of the Corn uh, Signature Series, and I will at some point. Um, but this this is this is my baby. Uh, maybe one day I'll get a seven and a fourteen string acoustic. But um, this guitar is pretty bad bad to the ass truthfully but um, aside of whatever's going on inside her which we're going to take a look at because that's not normal that hum you hear in the background i think because i haven't used her in a while And you might wonder how my band at that time played with corn. Well, think about it this way. I lived in Santa Maria. Santa Maria is very close to Bakersfield, and that's where corn is originally from. So you got to think about it that way. All right. Um, we used to go to some barbecues, hang out with the same people. I mean, out in California, everybody's everybody. Nobody, fame doesn't have to do nothing, and they weren't famous at the time. So you got that. Um, anyhow, enough out of that. Just enjoy Ripley. <laughs>
she needs some work. Anyways, you get the gist. That was the bridge pickup. Bridge in middle. Middle. Middle and neck. Neck. clean a little bit chorus Now, I don't remember what gauge strings I actually have on this. I do know they are DRs. Um, I've had a uh, really good relationship with DR throughout the years. Um, it's just recently, probably the last five years or more, I don't know what happened to the guy, my contact that I dealt with with DR no longer works there. So it's gone. I was, I always, I want to show you, on all, almost all my guitars, my third string, this string right here, is wound. Most guitars, people have a stainless steel or unwound string, you know, a uh, plain string would be your first three, but I like this one wound. Reason being, it stays in tune better. I just like the tone out of it, the sound out of it when it's when it's wound in that position. Um, so for years, I was buying two sets of strings because it was hard to get the actual string that I needed, which at the time was a 22 gauge um, for the wound string for the third position by itself. So you'd have to have no choice but to buy two sets of strings. And by doing that, I was like spending so much money. So I was in contact with a few people at DR and this one fella, I want to say his name was Brian, but I can't remember, um, was hooking me up. He was making, might as well say like a signature set for me. So I'd get both tens and nines and I'd have a 22 wound on every set. And then they started doing the neon strings and he was specializing the neons just for me. And I was like, bro, now that I'm getting into these seven string guitars, is there a way we can get neon sevens? He's like, nah, man, we don't make those yet. I'm like, okay, well, let's just customize a couple of sets, you know, instead of me buying three or four sets to make one set for a seven string, how about um, just send me out, you know, each gauge. And that's what he ended up doing. And then one day he sent me five sets of strings, all neons. And he's like, bro, you're the first one that's gonna be able to test these. Let me know what you think. He's like, these ain't even on the market yet. So I had the very first five sets of the neon sevens before they were released to the public, before they were put in store shelves, I had them. And I might still have a video or pictures of them somewhere. I'll have to look. They were awesome. The only thing I did not like about the Neons was the fact that after a while, especially with the style of playing that I do, the coating comes off. And nobody wants that. The tone, I didn't I didn't mind that. It sounded good. It, 
yeah, it was a little, some people like, ah, I don't like coated strings. They muffle the sounds. Nah, bro, it's, it, it's, yeah, I think like the dragon skins have like a type of coating. Almost all strings have a type of coating at some point, except for like the Dunlops and a few other brands. I mean, it's all on the person's ear and how they like the feel. I like the feel and the sound of them. They don't bother me. Um, lately, I've been using the Ernie Ball strings only because it's... And they're decent strings and I don't have the contact with DR anymore. I wish I still did because I would still be getting the DR string. So I'm back to buying single wound strings to make my sets complete, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um... I don't even know why I delved into that story for y'all, but I did. Um, I'm trying, currently I'm looking for a lighter wound string for the nine gauge sets. And because I'm thinking about going to an eight gauge on some of the guitars, like the, uh, the Jackson Soloist I have, and like one or two other guitars that I have that have the, uh, the tremolos, I'm thinking about getting like maybe a 20 or an 18 gauge wound string but i'm having a real difficult time finding them um, wrote to the companies haven't heard back yet so we'll we shall see if they end up having them you bet i'll be getting them i do have a surplus of 22 wounds they are drs they're in a single bag way up there and i do pull one out and yeah i do mix them with the ernie balls because i'm out of drs at the moment because I have a surplus of Ernie Ball sets. Yeah, I know, blasphemy, how dare you, blah, 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 who cares? Strings are strings. If they sound good and they play good, just do it. You know, whatever floats your boat. I'm not a uh, indoor C, so I'm not breaking any rules. It's all about, you know, it is what it is. Some people are like, oh, tone is in the amp and tone is in the guitar. No, bro, tone is in the hands. Tone is in the ears of the people who listen to your music and tones are in your heart and your ears. If it sounds good to you and it feels good to you and the other people like it, who the fuck cares? Dude, rather you're using a tube amp or a trans, you know, a solid state amp or one of these modeler amps or modeler effects or whatever. You know what I mean? Don't let anybody get you down. You know, I'm a, I'm a little rusty. I know, I know my my chops are not up to par like they were when I was younger. I'm not I'm not the spring chicken I once was. I can't shred like I used to. You know, I can't pull off them uh, Jeff Hammond and Kerry King solos anymore. It is what it is. I can't pull off any Satriani or Vi type playing anymore, or Edward Van Halen type playing anymore. Those days are gone past me. But at the same token, I still have fun. I still love what I do, and y'all should too. Um, yes, you don't need a plethora of high-end guitars to get your tone. Yeah, it'd be nice to own one or two or a few or more, but it's unnecessary. Same thing with the amp. All you need is what makes you happy. I've seen guys play Fender Squire guitars and beater Line 6 amps that sound phenomenal phenomenal these guys will blow away other dudes that have like eight nine thousand dollar gibsons you know what i'm saying guys that have fourteen thousand dollar prs libraries get blown out of the water by these guys with squires why because tone is in the artist and tone is in the people who like that artist so anybody Can be, an, can be a musician, can be an artist. Keep your heart at it. And don't don't let age get you down either. Don't be like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to play guitar, but who cares? Who cares? Yeah, I started playing guitar when I was five. That don't mean a pot of beans. What means a pot of beans is what's in your heart and what you feel like. You want to play? Then play. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Because you can do anything you put your mind to and your heart to. I'm going to keep playing until I pass. Bro, and you dead ass better know that even when I pass, wherever I'm going, I'm still playing. I'm taking one or two of these with me to the grave, without a doubt. I own a plethora of them. Yes, I guarantee my 85 less Paul Customs going with me to the grave. Rather, they make me ash, which I hope they don't, or I get buried. The 85 is definitely gone. Um, 
anyways let's not talk about morbid shit who cares back to the guitar so yeah i love this neck it is a uh, wizard ibanez neck as it should be it is made in japan and ibanez i believe these were made by team jcraft i'm not too 100 percent sure but they were 97, not 89, like I said at the beginning of the video. 97, 97. Silver Dot series was one year only. And these guitars were phenomenal. They were just plain black. They're called Silver Dot series because the Silver Dot inlay. You think of Steve I, you think about the, um, the pyramid inlays or the vine inlays. No, he had dot inlays on some of his guitars. Silver Dot series and green dot series were dots um these are demarzio pickups uh these were the seven string evos you hear how they sound the neck is great clean And as you can tell, it stays in tune pretty good. I love this guitar and you can tell why but uh yeah this video can keep going on and on and on and on we're already at 23 minutes that was just me showing her off and uh well actually we're longer than 23 minutes because this is just another part of like three or four other little short videos that are attached to it so sorry for the long video but i'm gonna try to this this was me making up for not making the videos the last couple of days i'm gonna try to get more to you um and hopefully throughout this journey of doing these videos and talking to y'all my playing skills excuse me my playing skills will get a lot better and um don't have to hear nothing from the haters because we got one talking crap about the uh harmonics the pinch harmonics saying how they, oh yeah them squeals are horrible they sound 84 well dude you know you don't have to listen to it you don't like it you can move on i personally that's my style that's you know i'm an 80s player 80s 90s yeah i like 70s music too but 80s and 90s is when i came up playing guitar you know yeah i may have started and shit i was five so that would have been two three so. that have been what 76 or 77 when i was five i, I don't remember anyhow Yeah, I'm, I'm more of an 80s, 90s player. I, I got I got more along with those style of musicians, the, those bands. Um, anyhow, sorry to waste anybody's time with some of the jibber-jabbering, but it is what it is. All right, uh, y'all have a great day. Love y'all, and uh, enjoy the video if you can, all right? Uh, see you later.